Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We are going to talk about administrative distance. So far, we've talked about routing protocols, specifically RIP, and we've mentioned that each routing protocol has a metric, and that metric is used to determine the best route. So if your router is running RIP and it learns about a destination network from two different sources, it can use its metric, which is the hop count, in order to determine the best route. Perhaps one route is five hops and another route is two, so RIP chooses the lowest hop count and then it populates its IP route table. Well, we also talked about the concept of an administrative distance. Well, we really just mentioned it. We said RIP has an admin distance of 120, but that's pretty much all we said. Well, why do we need to know about this? What is administrative distance and how is it used? Well, that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to look explicitly at administrative distance. And we're going to start off by asking, us, by asking ourselves this question. Well, who does your router know? And we're going to kind of set the stage for all the possible things, all the possible sources that your router can learn information from. And once we do that, the, the need for administrative distance is going to become pretty clear. And then we'll just move ahead and we'll look at administrative distance. We'll define it and give you all the details about it. And then we'll actually take a look at administrative distance in action, how it's actually used in a routing scenario. All right, so let's get started and find out who does your router know? Well, the answer might surprise you. So far, we've talked about one routing protocol, RIP, and we've only talked about one just to, to simplify things in order to get the concepts across. In reality, though, a router can run multiple routing protocols, and there are many reasons why you would do this. Sometimes a, a network design requires it, um, perhaps different parts of the network were originally designed to use different routing protocols. Um, perhaps a company has merged and the two different networks were designed differently and now they need to be connected. There could be many different reasons why, but uh, a fact of reality is multiple routing protocols can run at the same time on one router. So if we were to look at each routing protocol or each source of information as somebody that your router knows, you could list quite a few people. Uh, your router knows RIP, your router knows OSPF, your router knows EIGRP, and then last not, let's not forget your router can know static routes, and your router can also know directly connected routes. Now these are just a, a few examples. There are more routing protocols we could list on here. But this, this is a pretty good group here. Now, the router needs a way to determine the best route from all these competing sources. So let's say a group of these, let's say the three routing protocols, RIP, OSPF, and EIGRP, let's say each one of them is telling your router about a particular network. Well, which one is the router going to use? We know about the metric idea, like hop count for RIP, but OSPF doesn't use hop count. So... OSPF, the cost there, its metric, you can't compare it to the metric, which is hop count for RIP. So what can we do? Well, this brings us to administrative distance. And administrative distance is going to solve the problem for us. So administrative distance is used to choose the best route between multiple sources of routing information. Okay, so in our last scenario, the three different routing protocols all told us about the same route. Well, there was no way to compare them because they're all completely different. However, administrative distance enables us to compare them. That means that every routing protocol, static routes, and connected routes all have an administrative distance. And this distance is actually a number, is kind of a reflection of their trustworthiness. In other words, some sources are considered to be better than others. So if two people are telling you a story, you might believe one more than the other because they, you, you trust this other person more than, than this person. Well, it's the same thing with administrative distance. It's a reflection of how good that information is. Administrative distance is a number, and it's, it's, it's a range, actually. The lowest is zero and the highest is 255. And the rule is, the lower the administrative distance, the better the information is, the better that source of information is. So in a second here, we're going to see all the different administrative distances. Keep in mind, whenever you're comparing two different sources of information, the lower one is the better one. Here's the table of sources of information 
and their related administrative distances. And they've been listed here in order. So at the very top are connected routes, and at the very bottom are RIP version 1 and version 2. There are more routing protocols to talk about, but this is uh, the majority of them that you're going to come across at this point in your studies. So connected routes are always preferred to static routes. Static routes are always preferred to EIGRP because their administrative distance is drastically lower. IGRP is less preferred than EGRP. OSPF below that, so you can work your way down. Um, at some point, come back to this part of the video, pause it, write all these down, or just watch this a few times. Definitely commit these to memory when you are um, working on a problem in a network or, or a design scenario. Um, you need to keep administrative distances uh, in mind. Okay. So let's actually now move on and take a look at just a simple routing scenario uh, and how admin distance comes into play there. All right, so here, let's say router B is connected to the 10, 10, 10, 0 network to slash 24. And ultimately, router A is what we're going to focus on. So let's say router A and router D are running OSPF between them. And router A and router C are running RIP between them. And we know that would be RIP version 2, right? So ultimately, router A is going to t learn about this 10 network from both of them. And if we were to put the two routes side by side, the, the network information is the same. However, the administrative distances of OSPF and RIP obviously are not the same. So in this scenario, just based on admin distance alone, router A would choose the OSPF route over the RIP route because OSPF has a lower administrative distance, which means OSPF is a more trusted uh, routing protocol than RIP, and router A would then take the information from OSPF and insert that into its IP routing table as opposed to the information learned from RIP. That means when router A wants to route to the 10 dot network, it would send the traffic to router D. All right? And congratulations, we've made it to the end of the tutorial. Really, the biggest point. I'd like to make is this, memorize the administrative distances. Uh, it, it comes up often in design and in troubleshooting scenarios, and you should just know them right off the top of your head. So take a few minutes, commit them to memory, the best thing you can do for yourself. And then the second point is exactly what administrative distance enables us to do. When we have multiple sources of information, admin distance enables a router to choose the best source of that information. All right, and that's it. That is administrative distance. Thanks for watching.